feel like you're behind on the whole money thing, it's fine. You are not alone. So let's talk about a few big ways to make up ground. Rich Girl Roundup. Welcome back to Rich Girl Roundup. As a reminder, we take our listener questions about every month. We put out the call for questions on Instagram, so follow Money with Katie, and we will pick one that feels kind of interesting and like it could apply to a lot of people. Now, as my standard disclaimer, I am not a licensed financial professional. This is not financial advice. This is just what would Katie do or think if she were in your situation? This week's question is from Chelsea. I'm 32 and I feel like I am late to the money game. I am only just beginning to look into other financial avenues besides retirement accounts because I'm finally making decent money, but the main feelings I have are overwhelm in the sense of being so behind. What would be a good next slash first step to focus on if I'm trying to play catch up? Not necessarily trying to retire early, just trying to get enough to live comfortably, medium bougie until death do I part. First of all, Chelsea, you and I both strive for the medium bougie life. So is there anything better? Of course, Louis, I always say bougie. Secondly, 32 is certainly not late. And I noticed you said besides retirement accounts, which tells me you've already been saving for retirement. I'm also hearing you say you don't want to retire early necessarily, just that you want to live comfortably and be able to retire eventually. Obviously, I don't know much else about your situation besides these few things, but I'm not exactly getting a picture of someone who is super behind. If anything, this sounds like a very normal, reasonable financial position for someone who's 32 to be in. To some degree, yes, your financial situation does come down to how much you are investing and over how much time. Those two factors, contributions and years passing, ultimately are going to determine your outcome. So if you have fewer years, you have to contribute more. And if you contribute more, you need fewer years. Conversely, if you have more years, you don't have to contribute as much. Fortunately, you still have 30 plus years ahead of you. You have got plenty of time. In fact, a lot of economists' consumption models for life presume a negative or flat savings rate in someone's 20s because of how expensive that phase of life can be and how relatively lower paid. Big wedding, home, kids, like it adds up quickly, right? But as long as you're continuing to progress in your career and earn more and allow your expenses to come back down, most people are able to start saving far more aggressively in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. I bet you would feel way more in control if you had a simple system that checked off some big boxes for you. So think about this like a framework rather than specific advice, since like I said, I don't know a ton about your situation. But first, figure out what your save rate is currently. It's probably going to fluctuate month to month, but if you track your income and spending over the course of a year, that can help you paint an accurate picture of how much of your take-home pay you are saving and investing. If you have 33 years until retirement, that means you probably want to shoot for saving 20 to 25% of your income, assuming you want to continue to live the same standard of living in retirement. Speaking of investing, hit your basic buckets, 401k, Roth IRA, brokerage accounts. We could spend another 30 minutes talking about which assets to buy in which accounts, so I'll keep it high level with this. With a 30-year timeline, you can afford to be aggressive. 90% stocks, 10% bonds, that's usually the mix most appropriate for someone with this type of timeline, and the tax diversification of having all three accounts will provide flexibility for you later. And lastly, you may want to play around with something like a financial independence tracker. I will link mine in the show notes of this episode, but this allows you to input your income, expenses, assumed rates of return, and more, and it'll tell you inflation adjusted about the trajectory you are on for retirement. I think a sense of awareness and control would go a really long way with the way that you're feeling. For example, I plugged in a little example, someone with $50,000 invested already, $100,000 per year income set to rise by 4% per year, and spending $4,500 per month, therefore saving about $2,500 per month after taxes, with spending that's rising at 3% per year, and then a 7% average rate of return before inflation. They were on track to hit financial independence in 21 years with $2.4 million. So with a 30 plus year timeline ahead of you, I think you are going to be just fine. <laughs> 